and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be doing a just for fun project. My neighbor, who's a great guy, came over and asked me if I could do a little project for him. And what he needs is to be able to drill 1 8 diameter holes on the end of some wooden dowels. Now, a few years back, he came to me with the same problem. Here's the dowel, there's the 1 8 hole, and here's what I made for him, which is just basically a little jig, so it fits over the dowel, and he has a guide hole here that's about 3 quarters of an inch deep, and well that guides the drill at the proper place for his dowel. The problem now is he needs more because he's using different size dowels now and here are the four sizes that he's going to need to drill holes into. And well I'm going to be making the same type of jig but I'm going to make him four of them and instead of using hex stock well, I'll be using square stock. So first things first let's move over to the cutoff bandsaw and cut our blank pieces or parts to length. This stop is fixed. It can't pivot out of the way. And if it's fixed, well, there's a problem because once this part is cut, it could jam between the blade and the stop. And that quite often results in a broken blade. So to avoid that, we leave a gap. But we want an accurate positioning of the part. And well, for that, we use a shim. So each time we position our part, we use a shim to give us a gap so that we avoid jamming our part. So here are the four different sizes of dowels that we need to drill. Here's our four blank parts. Now let's head over to our lathe for surfacing and drilling. So we're going to start by centering the part by eye. Now we're using a four jaw chuck because well obviously my part is square.
Now we can go and get our dial indicator for the final centering. Well, there you go. I can produce all the parts that way. But it's a little finicky and, well, not everyone has a lathe. So, are there other ways of doing this? Yes, there's many, many other ways of producing this part. But we'll look at two more. We'll look at how to produce it on the milling machine and, well, how to produce it on the drill press. On the mill, if I have a properly aligned vise, well, I can side mill the end surfaces of my part quite easily. All I have to do is insert the parts into the vise, support it on a parallel so that I'm in the proper plane, and then let the end overhang the end of the vise jaw. Now, be careful. If you're holding just on one side of a vise of this type, you need 
something of the same width on the other end so that your jaw doesn't cock sideways and will not hold your part properly. So we can set that up and we are here and now we'll take a look at a side milling operation. Now this is a real time saver because on the lathe we had to set up the part well eight times for the eight ends and that means I had to center the part eight times if I wanted to drill it after I surfaced it. Whereas on this setup well all I have to do is align the vise once. All my surfaces after that will be square. So here are the three parts that we just milled and well we're ready to start drilling. This is a mill drill so we'll be drilling with this milling machine. But I want to speed things up a little. Now I could take each part, set it up in the vise, edge find, move over XY to the center and drill a hole. But that would take quite a bit of work because well each part would have to be set up twice, once on each end. And that would imply also that we're going to have a lot of tool changes. So to speed things up, I'm going to use a V-block. Now, the V-block is mounted in the vise and it's not going to come out of the vise. The part that I want to machine will be mounted in the V-block. And in this case, well, I've mounted the part that we already drilled. Now, one end of that part had a 3 8 hole in it. I've mounted or I've installed a 3 8 dowel pin in my drill chuck and I've aligned it with the XY axis so that both are aligned. That means that the center axis of rotation of the tool is on the center of the hole. And what I can do now is lock everything in place because that V-block and the part that's mounted in it will always come back to the same spot. I can change parts and I won't have to re-measure anything. So there, four one-eighth of an inch holes and, well, four holes of different sizes to match the dowels in question. So let's say we didn't have a lathe and we didn't have a mill. Can I still produce this part accurately? Well, if all you have is a drill press, the answer is yes you can. In a fashion quite similar to what we did on the milling machine, but there's a problem there. There's no XY axis on the table of this drill press. And, well, it's locked solidly in place. And, well, when we were on the mill, we used a hole in the center of our first part to insert a pin into that was mounted in the spindle. And with the XY axis, I brought things into alignment, and that was my center. And I knew that relative to the V-block, well, I would always come back to that center as long as I lock the table in that position. Well, that's fine. But I also said, what if we didn't have a lathe? Well, if we didn't have a lathe, we can't have a part 
with a hole on center. That doesn't mean we can't do something similar, but instead of bringing the table to the pin, we're going to bring the V-block to the pin, but without moving the table. So we have our V-block here that's floating, it's loose on the table, and I have in the spindle here, in my drill chuck, I have a countersink. Now the countersink isn't important, but what is important is that the width of this countersink, the body of the countersink, is identical to the distance across flats of my square stock. So, if I hold the body of this countersink in my spindle, and I lower it into the V, and then I lean the V up onto it, and lock that in place, and then I fix or I attach the V-block in that position to the table. That will mean that the center of this countersink will be positioned in the proper position for my square stock. So if I put this part in there and I replace the countersink with a drill, I'll be on center. Let's take a look at that.
Well, that was a fun little project. So, until we meet again, have fun. Be safe. It's very important. And happy machining.